Yes, 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 welcome back to the channel. Let's talk semi-final two rehearsals, the first half of the group and day three. Uh, it's now five in the afternoon, so I have not uploaded, but I was at work, so I have been, you know, catching and following if I still rehearsals. And I did a podcast episode, I usually link them down below, the episodes I have done, and we have done Eurovision podcast too. And I said that... Uh, if I would be described 2021, one word would be surprise. Because to me, the country's opening semifinal two is one of the big favorites, and they have been for years being considered as the big joke of Eurovision. And now they have one of the best songs, and to me, this is the winner because to me, she will get so many 12 points. I think this is the Sweden's 12 points in the final. Girl, if you're in the finals, you will get the Swedish 12 points from the jurors and the televote. Hell yeah. Uh, I don't, I want to be like, I think this is a song that can actually gravitate towards, you know, Azerbaijan and Azerbaijan and Georgia in the east and all the way through to the United Kingdom and Iceland in the west and up and north and down the south. I think this is a song that can win. This is my winner for this season. I will stand by it. If she could, if she finished top three, I'm happy. But I think she deserves the win because this is the best song this year, and also the 10 year anniversary since Zenith was in Eurovision 2011 in Düsseldorf. So let's see a rehearsal clip. Yes, girl. Yes, she has a table too. Wow. The only thing I was like, why does the dancer look like aliens? But someone said in the comment section that it looked like wrestlers. I was like, okay. And then they had standing for Flo Rida, so he will be there, hopefully. I mean, but the still, the outfits, the staging, the production, her, the quality of it all. This is the biggest surprise of the season, and I... S Mmm, mmm, I love it. I mean, this is my, I think one of my most listened, most listened Eurovision song contest songs of 2021. Easy. This is one of the I've listened to the most. I love this song. I will vote for this song, and I will pray to God that she will finish at least top five, top three, or even win because this to me screams quality. This is quality at its best. And I'm, I'm a little bit sorry that Estonia, <laughs> Estonia is coming after this because she's killing Uko Sobieste with this song. Sorry boo, but she is. But soon it, you got my 12 points, girl. Yep, yep, yep. And like I said in my previous video about San Marino, San Marino is killing Estonia with this one because um, Estonia is coming out after Est San Marino's fiery opening as the number two. And can I be honest, this to me is the most boring song of the season. I mean, I have heard all the songs, some of them are bad, some of them are fantastic, some of them are meh. And this is a song that was screams meh to me. Because to me, the song, the lucky one with Uko Sylvester, he's the fabulous singer, handsome and all that, but the song is so I mean, to me, it doesn't it doesn't happen in anything. It doesn't happen anything in this song. So to me, I cannot be positive about the song. Hopefully, he give me a good staging. But to me, this is the worst one. But sorry, Uko yes, the girl, honey, you're fabulous. But anyway, mm -mm. he's so gorgeous. The look, yeah, that's a shame. That, but that it's a shame that the song is so bad. Yeah, in the comment section, people are saying that Estonia for some reason loves Thunder and Lightning. Uh, yeah, after Victor and Storm. I love that song. I mean, uh, I have no positive comments a bit about to say about the song. The staging looks cool. We have the Thunder and Lightning, and he sings well, and he's very handsome to look at. But the song itself is so snooze fast. This is like. I mean, you. When you see the pre-production pre shows, when you have, you have some jurors to go through all the songs and give scores and see who scores highs and who wins and who go, 
I mean, this is the song I will go if I can. I cannot watch the semifinals because I'm working that night. But anyway, this is the song I will actually go grab the snacks. I will go grab the snacks and be like, who's next? Mm, no, sorry, boo. I don't think you will qualify. If you do, I'm happy for you because then you prove me wrong, but no. Anyway, Uko Sevieste, fabulous, handsome, can sing very well, but the song is boring. Bye. Yep, yep, yep. After Samarino's fiery opening and a stone's boring entry, we have Benny Cristo with Omega from Czech Republic. And I mean, the uh, Czech Republic after um, that uh, Light Me song in 2017 or 2018, Czech Republic is coming up. They're coming up with some good stuff. And I think this song stands out by itself. Maybe it's not my favorite song of the year, but to me it stands out for the good reasons. It's actually a catchy tune and he sings well and looks good. So let's see what we have on the rehearsal. He's a performer. I have to say, yes, the performer. I have, yeah, I can uh, say he's a performer. He sounds well. He's dancing. He's giving a show. So that's nice. He's giving a show. Uh, what do you think about Benny Cristo and Umaga and the first rehearsal for Czech Republic? Is this your qualification song? And if it is, vote, vote, vote. Yes, this was a short video, but I have to say, no negative comments about this one. Yes, and let's talk one more Eurovision. Let's talk about Greece with Stefania with Last Dance, the first rehearsals by Greece. And I have to say, this song, when it came out, I think it was a little bit under the radar. But when we came, are coming close and close and close to Eurovision, I've seen, I think this song is climbing actually the way up. Uh, to the top 10 position in the finals because this has climbed so high up with the fans and I think she's climbing in the odds in the ranking too so Miss Stefania girl you can give us a top 10 results for Greece if you pull it through but anyway let's see a little bit short clip of the rehearsal oh okay girl now the outfit okay Yes! I have to say, she was giving me Vegas, Vegas vibe with that performance. I mean, yeah, I can actually just say, I love the outfit, I love her singing, I love the, actually how the choreography and stage the show. It's very simplistic, but um, for some reason it works. And uh, this song is growing on me, this song is actually growing on, I think, many people, and I think actually she can do very, very well in the results. This is, uh, I would say, a, a little bit both the jury and the public song. This can actually be a radio song. And she can sing well, and she's cute. And uh, I just read somewhere that she got the biggest applause of this day. I was like, Ooh, okay. Maybe, maybe some people say that it's because she's part Dutch, but I was like, I don't think that that said that you that because you're part Dutch that you get the biggest applause. I think she gets the biggest applause because she's very talented and she has a good song. Anyway, good luck Reese and let's see you in the next rehearsal. Yes, 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 and let's see Vincent Bueno with the song Amen. Yes, there is a battle of the clashes of the Amen songs this year. It's Austria versus Slovenia, who is the one who will qualify. And so far, I think people are screaming that Slovenia will end, will qualify, not Austria. Anyway, let's see the first rehearsal, a little bit short clip of the rehearsal for Austria and Vincent Bueno. Okay. Okay. I have to say that station looked a little bit lackluster, but for some reason he has copied the Austria's oh Austria staging from 2017 no 2018 when they came third uh, when the Netta won I don't what the hell was that song he was doing doing the John Legend thing with the holograms all over anywho uh, he he borrowed that staging uh, I think they need to light up the staging because this looks so bland and black and boring and 
it did happen something. I mean, he sings very well, handsome, and I said this draws on the comment section that people are saying he will not qualify, but as if someone said, as a Filipino, they are grateful that they are happy that a uh, Filipino is represent, representing in the So I was like, I cannot agree with that. Um, but, um, no. No offense to you, Vincent, but this song is very sweet and very nice, but to me it's not a qualification song. This heat is very strong. I think uh, beforehand Austria had upper game to qualify, but now we have seen the Eurovision song and now we have listened to the Eurovision song. This has been the one that we keep forgetting about. Anywho, good luck. Next one. Yes, let's talk Poland and Rafael and the ride and the rehearsal. But now I have to say, when I post anything about this song, people usually say the same thing, that the Polish people don't <laughs> support this at all. I was like, ouch. I mean, I, if I was the one who was representing a country and I saw comments that people don't support me, I would be like, yay. Anyway, and I also have to say, when I, every time I listen to this song, I hear one other song in my head. If you ever seen the mu movie Music and Lyrics, or Music and Lyrics, I think with Hugh Grant and Bar Drew Barrymore, we know that Hugh Grant plays an 80s kind of icon, <laughs> and I have to look it up, and the, it's you know, Pop's Ghost My Heart band is called Pop, 80s pop band, and did a hip, hip thrust, and then... I mean, the song is the, it's, it's literally the same song to me. It's like 80s cheesy pop music, but um, I wonder, I know. Maybe people love it and uh, vote. How old is he? Oh. Girl, honey, you need to have those glasses on because you look way better and look way younger with those glasses on. Because now when you took them off, I'll be like, mm, are you one of those middle-aged men who have a little bit of crisis and need to be, stand, be in your vision with the pop song from the 80s? Mm, little, no, keep the glasses on. <laughs> I mean, I better keep the glasses on. Uh, what do I think? Um, I mean, it looks very slick production. A lot of weight, a lot of dancers, and you have those, and you have a nice background. Um, this can go either way because I th either way it can go. So this is a borderline. This is the first borderline song of semi-final two to me because this can be either voted out or go way all the way up there. I think the jury is gonna love this one for some reason, but the public, I don't think, is gonna love it. Mm. I don't know, but it's very 80s and people love the 80s, so anyhow, let's see the next one. Yes, and the ne next one out is Moldova with Natalia Gorodenko with Sugar. And her th please don't give me any it moments here, you eating someone's face like cake. Oh, don't, don't give me that, please. Anyway, I think this song is one of those that I have a little bit high expectations of because before her last song last year was so disastrous, so I was like, okay girl, you have to bring it way, way, way better to actually have me for, have attention from me. So, um, yeah, and I love this song this year. I like this, kind of like Kylie Minogue-esque vibe song. So, hmm? let's see what they pull off for the staging. Yeah, ooh, looks expensive. Girl, you look expensive. I have to say, she looks expensive, honey, with that skater outfit. I was so gonna say it, she looks like an ice skater. Ice skater outfit, I love the hair, it looks very flowy and very healthy. And the dancers are back with the same outfits, but black this time. Love that. And then have the spinning table. And she's pulling out the choreography and she can sing live. But the question is, can she pull off the high note in the end? Hope to God she can. Um, yeah, it looks expensive. I have to say, this is the this is the one in this semifinal so far. Besides San Marino, who looks expensive, it looks polished. Um, yeah, I have to say she's gonna give me 
polished, kind of, you know, all that missing is the headpiece, and then we have kind of, you know, a Moldova. Um, yeah, thank you, Moldova. I love that staging, so good luck. And the next last one, and the next... Ne and one of the last songs out for semi-final two, this day of semi-final two is Iceland. And with, I'm not gonna pronounce the, the band because I can't pronounce it in Icelandic. But anyway, the song is 10 years and I think this is one of the countries from last year who has the highest pressure on them because they were one of the fan favorites to actually win the whole comp. Damn towel. They were actually one of the big favorites to win the competition, so can they pull it off now? Can they win? Can Iceland win? Uh, let's see the first rehearsal of Iceland. Okay. I mean, I have to say that the song is very geeky. The whole performance screams geeky, in a in a cute way. In a cute way, the screams very geeky. I mean, they have the backgrounds with some aliens, and then I see they're doing the dancing. I saw the previous clip of the whole. I have seen the whole clip. I just do part of it. Um, they have the dancing. They have the instrument. They have the movements. They have the geekiness. They have the cuteness. They have the campy vibe. I have to say, this whole performance screams campy. And in a good way, and it's very cute. So uh, they can go to the finals, but the winner of the year this year, no, I don't think they will win. But if they did, that would be cool. This is a cool song, but I think this song last year was a little bit stronger. But it's very cute and very campy. So uh, good luck, Iceland. And now we are waiting for the last one out, which is the Hurricane Girls from Serbia. Ooh, yes, 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 welcome back and let's talk about the last song of today that finished up this rehearsal day and that is Serbia with the Hurricane Girls with Loco Loco. Let's see the first rehearsal. I have to say actually I did love the acoustic version of that song. I thought that was even better than the song they're gonna perform but I have high hopes because they, I think they're gonna bring a show. Welcome back the Hurricane Girls. Okay, I have to say that looks expensive and uh, I saw before before they have like black and white local local all over the walls. I was like, okay, it looks expensive because I remember when we had that, you know, when panel was gonna watch the 2020 songs and they actually called the uh, last year's performance of their song uh, Hasta la Vista and I remember the panel comment that the outfit looks cheap the whole performance screams cheap but um, I think their performance for the new song Loco Loco this year looks expensive it looks polished I love the outfits I love I think it looks expensive and they will qualify. Girl, if they don't qualify, I would be so surprised. Um, yeah. I have to say, well done. This, I think Semi 2 is a little bit more of a bloodbath than Semi 1. But um, the only songs I'm a little bit meh about this time of this semi final so far is Estonia and Austria. Those some are meh. I, no offense to them, but they are great songs, but they are not songs that I will remember. They are not memorable. But anyway, thank you to Hurricane Girls with Loco Loco, and see you tomorrow with more rehearsal clips. Bye!